All right, so I'm not going to come in with this really hard question first. <laughs> It'll be the second question. Okay. So the first question I have for you, just to get you kind of comfortable, is can you just introduce yourself to me? And I'm actually kind of curious how you ended up being a part of this. So it's not one of the questions on the list, but I think it's a good way to sort of ease into this. Yeah. Um, so my name's McKaylin. My pronouns are she, her. Um, I live in West Michigan. I was born and raised here. And I started working with the diatribe in 2017. Um, it was around that time that I first started writing and uh, getting really involved with my local arts community here. And working with students um, was the natural next step for me. I never thought of poetry uh, or art as something that I wanted to do professionally, um, but being able to bring that art form to students uh, and continue that work, uh, writing and performing through teaching, uh, has been really amazing. Dude, okay, you're good to go. <laughs> like, you're good at this, this is fine. You're gonna be great. Okay, so this is a, kind of a deep question, but see kind of how you can tackle it. But the question is, how do you pull yourself out of dark places? So from a sort of a personal standpoint, like how would you answer that? Yeah, um, I think that question is really difficult. Uh, I think anyone who struggled with mental health knows what. I'm gonna interrupt you. I'm really sorry. Yeah, this no, that's okay. Really comfortable. You were yeah. starting down an excellent path, so I didn't want to waste it. Try to rephrase that back into the answer. Yeah. So that was a really good answer, and I didn't want you to go all the way and then be like, "By the way, we're gonna do." Right, it right. So um, try to rephrase the question back in. Yeah. How do you pull yourself out of dark places? I think anyone who has struggled with mental health uh, knows that dark places come, uh, dark days, and days that dealing with your mental health uh, is much more difficult. Um, and when it comes to that term, like dark places, um, I think the challenge is that the world is a pretty dark place. Um, and I think when you think about it that way, um, it really comes to like creating space for yourself uh, within your community that feels safe and secure. Um, and for me, I think like no matter what self-care I'm doing, that's never something I can do completely by myself. It's really something that I have to be doing uh, in the company of other people. Um, and so there's a couple of different things that I do when my mental health gets really bad. Um, I try to remember to have like patience with myself uh, and grace for those days that getting out of bed is a challenge or going to work uh, or even making a phone call seems impossible. Um, I try to check in with myself and be communicative with people around me, people I'm closest with, um, about how I'm feeling and where I'm at, even when that's really hard to do. Um, and slowing down and talking to yourself about where you're at can also be really hard. Uh, it, we live in a really fast-paced world um, where mental health can kind of hit you like a freight train if you're not doing that continuous checking in with yourself. Um, so those are just a couple of things that like come to mind with that question. Awesome. That's really great. Cool. <laughs> you're doing, <good. laughs> I'm like you're so doing really well. You're very articulate. Oh, good job. Okay, okay. I'm going to drink again. <laughs> yeah, that was a great answer. And also a good link, I think, like, that was kind of right, wouldn't you say that's kind of in a sweet spot for like a length of answer? Not that we're too specific about that, but that didn't feel too long. Awesome. So, okay, next. Um, what are some ways besides writing that you use to cope with mental illness or mental health? Yeah. Um, so I have been to therapy uh, in the past when I was much younger, but I don't have a like strong background or a lot of professional knowledge about strategies to cope and deal with mental health. And I know that seeking those resources is so important, um, especially for uh, you know people who like those holistic or community driven like ways of dealing with your mental health struggles. If those don't work, turning to like professional help can be so, so important. Um, but things that, uh, sorry. That's okay, you're doing fine. Yeah, no things worries. that, Things that um, come to mind uh, when, like, I think about how I, like, deal with my mental illness or cope uh, with those symptoms is really comes back to community again. Um, I think it's not just, uh, like, being in the presence of other people, um, but when that space is, like, created, like, a sanctuary or a safe space uh, where people um, 
feel protected uh, in their truth and in their identity, um, those are like spaces for me that can be so healing um, and really the only place that we can find the care that we need. Because I think um, it's really, really impossible to care like for yourself, by yourself. That's not really a responsibility that we can take on. Um, but when you are sharing community and when that community is very intentional, I think that's when like a lot of healing and a lot of like care can happen. Awesome, that's great. When it comes to mental illness, what does it mean to like quote unquote get better? Yeah, um, I think a huge part of uh, quote unquote, getting better um, with mental illness is having the language to recognize and acknowledge your experiences um, and having space with other people to like process those emotions. I think the other big thing that comes to mind is that um, it's really not like we as people who are sick. I think we live in a society, um, in a culture that uh, is not one where like our health is prioritized. Uh, we live under a global economy that treats people and the planet as disposable. Um, and when you come to grips with that, that reality is gonna be a challenge to anybody's mental health. Um, but it's really, I, I think it's really important to acknowledge that like mental health doesn't happen in a vacuum. Um, and we live in a very uh, sick and dysfunctional society and a, a one that, yeah, it doesn't prioritize us being like healthy or happy. That's deep. That's, that's great. Wow. Um, are you familiar with Rudy Francisco's honest poem? Yeah. I know like you're familiar with it, but like you're ready with the answer. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. So this is going to be a reaction, right? So would they have just watched this video in this circumstance? Sort of in the curriculum, would students have just watched yeah, this video? Yeah, students will have just seen it, yep. So you might even open with, like, okay, you just saw that video. Mm -hmm. Here's sort of what I like about it. Something like that might be a nice lead-in. Yeah. Assuming that they're sort of following that narrative. Okay. I don't know how to start. I'm like, uh, okay. yeah, Rudy Francisco's poem is amazing. It's so powerful. Um, one of my favorite lines uh, from that poem is, I have this purple heart. I got it from beating myself up over things I can't fix. Um, I think all of us, that's like a very uh, universal feeling of needing control, um, of needing to fix things that are too big uh, and too broken for us to handle. Um, and I just really resonate with that line. That's awesome. Um, did you have any other lines in the poem that you resonated with as well? If not, that's okay. But yeah. Um, I also really love the line, I've got a hamper overflowing with really loud mistakes and a graveyard in my closet. Um, I think we can all resonate with the feeling of what we're hiding in our personal lives, um, being a very attached to the, the places where we go to hide. Um, and I think there's always things that we're afraid of coming out um, and fear can keep us silent. Um, and sharing our truth, even the ugly parts of it, is, is really, really important. Just a follow-up to that, like, why is that so important yeah. as an individual? Yeah, I think uh, what I try to remember is that silence isn't going to save you or keep you any safer than you are um, being loud and outspoken. Um, and I think the only way that we can, like, grow and develop as people is when we're um, being fully honest and confronting uh, those pieces of ourselves that we'd rather keep buried away. Thanks. Okay. This one's a little bit of a, um, a different format, a little bit of a challenge, right? So I think the best way to think about it is um, maybe, you, maybe you think of almost me as the sort of the audience, the student audience um, that needs to be encouraged. Um, can you give them, can you give students a brief performance pep talk as, as they are, as though they are about to perform Remember Why You Wrote It? So when I say pep talk, like, right. I mean, like pep talk, I just mean like what would you, because you're in these classrooms, like in those face-to-face -face moments, like what would you tell a student, mm -hmm. you know, that to try to give them sort of the courage and the bravery to do this? Yeah. 
Um, something my mom said to me a lot while I was growing up is feel the fear and do it anyway. Uh, and I really want uh, all of the students who are with the diatribe to like lean into that and remember that nothing worth doing is going to keep you comfortable or feel um, natural. Uh, we always have to push ourselves to be the best versions of ourselves and like poetry is the best way to do that. You're sharing like a truth that's so personal um, and your voice is like unique. And if you don't have the courage to like share your truth, um, not only are you keeping yourself silent, but you're uh, leaving that space open um, where like you could be inspiring others to be sharing their truth as well. Um, that's something I like to remember too. I always get anxiety. I, I will never be able to perform without um, like sweating and shaking and feeling afraid. Um, but every time you do that, you're not only empowering yourself, but you're making room for other people to feel empowered and do the same thing. That's so good. So good. You're crushing it. You really are. Yes. Now, I have to go next, and I'm like, damn, I am not, I am not as prepared. I wrote the questions, and I'm like, oh, how am I going to do this? So I think we can, we might make it through all of these. Here. Okay. So um, can you give some examples of performance sort of tips like or advice on how to give a dynamic performance? Like yeah. what, would you, what advice would you give? My number one tip to anyone who is performing for the first time is not to read or to speak like you're reading a poem. Um, that can be really hard, uh, but practicing on your own a few times and changing your volume, changing your pattern to speak uh, can be really helpful. And then when you get up to the mic or wherever you may be up on stage, just reminding yourself and grounding yourself in your own voice, your own tone of voice, uh, is something that I've found really helpful. I always like to um, tell myself, you're having a conversation, you're not reading a poem. And then the, the tone change and the rhythm um, of whatever piece I'm reading really comes out as I get more comfortable. Um, but starting from a place where you're really focused on just keeping your tone level and having a natural sounding normal conversation can be really helpful. Great advice. And for some reason I just lost the question. Hang on. Okay, last one. This is sort of just a series of things. Um, so these just kind of need like little, these are more like nuggets, right? Am I, I feel right? like you should go. Yeah? So, what does normal mean? Does what? Mean? Yeah, what does normal mean? Uh, I think normal is an illusion. I think the systems that like define and teach us what normal is need to be questioned all the time. Um, and the truth is change is constant. It's the only thing that we can count on. Um, and what life looks like today is gonna look so different five years from now, 10 years from now, and today looks a lot different than uh, the world that our parents grew up in. And so, um, yeah, I don't think there is any definition of normal. I think that word is there to, uh, you know, create uh, norms in our culture and our society that really hold us back from being who we are. Agreed. What does mental illness look like, sound like, smell like, taste like? Like, how would you quantify it in sort of sensory terms? Mm, I think um, it depends. I think mental illness is sometimes the thing that makes me close to people. Uh, the struggles that I've gone through um, sometimes like make it easier for me to be in company uh, and sharing my life with those around me. And then some days, especially on the bad days, uh, mental illness looks like being very alone um, in silence um, and like a debilitating, like deafening sound almost. Um, something that can be really hard to move around or work through. your mental health? Um, yeah, okay, wait, let me think about this for a second. That's okay. Hmm. 
Hmm. I think um, my mental health and my identity share a really interesting relationship um, where my like privilege, my like white womanhood is something that allows me to move through the world um, and be granted a lot of grace and opportunity even through uh, those periods of struggle. And I also think um, my identity has made me uh, really aware of um, how, I don't know, sorry. That's okay. Um, That's okay. We can also skip questions that you're like, it's just not really jiving with. That's totally fine as well. So I thought you about- try it, you can do it, or we can skip it. It's your choice. You don't have to feel anything. Yeah, I think if, if we can come back to it, uh, maybe that would be good. Okay. I don't know cool. why this one's tripping me up. No <laughs> worries at all. Um, how do you feel like major events, personal and global, that there's been a couple mm -hmm. lately? <laughs> yeah. The last four years. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel like major events have impacted your mental health? Yeah. The world recently, I think, has had a huge impact on everyone's mental health, um, mine included. Um, I think everything from like coronavirus uh, to global warming um, to the economic crisis that we're in uh, and the people's uprising that's happening around the movement to defund the police and for abolition and black liberation um, are all things that are changing business as usual in really abrupt ways and that can be really hard to navigate um, when you're having a period of like struggling with your mental health. And I also think um, something that's grounding me in this moment is that um, uncertainty is often thought about as like something that we should avoid um, and something that fills us with fear. Um, but I'm reminded of this quote from uh, Virginia Woolf, um, uh, where she, like on the eve of World War II, she said, the future is dark, which is I think the best thing the future can be. Um, and in that darkness, she saw a sense of hope um, and like, a an uncertainty of how the world would change, but a certainty in knowing that that change was coming. Um, and that's something I'm trying to remember uh, and remind myself of right now, that through this period of mass like change that's happening and upending business as usual, um, the possibilities for transformations in this world become a lot more possible. That's great, that's great. Okay. Um. I'm gonna give you some sentences with a blank. Yeah. I'd like you to sort of fill in the sentence. Um, I actually want to ask if that's like sort of the extent of the exercise. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can I, I was just gonna ask you a question. Mm -hmm. um, with these sentences, is it is it really just saying the I'm starved to feel fill in the blank? If you say that entire sentence, is that the the extent of the exercise, or do you want them to sort of then? articulate why they used that word? Um, hmm, that was actually something I hadn't considered. Uh, or is it just, you're just lifting a sentence out and we'll do a little montage of sentences or mm -hmm. something? Yeah, why don't we just do the montage? Okay. Yeah, so I think with everyone's back to back, it would, yeah. like the unpacking becomes It'd less. be cool. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I'll just give you the sentence with the blank and then I'll let you repeat it, okay? Okay. So I'm starved to feel blank. I'm starving to feel solidarity and power. I will not let blank keep me from blank. I will not let voices of despair keep me from fighting for a better world. If I knew I could do anything, I would. If I knew I could do anything, I would. Oh, that's a hard one. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why I didn't list that one either. Um, If I knew any, I could do anything, I would run for office. I think. I don't know. That's good. <laughs> Wait, you said That's that great. so powerfully. And then yeah. <laughs> you're allowed to do that. <laughs> do it. All right. My blank, uh, and, and within that sort of sadness, hardship, struggle, that sort of an idea, my blank is a blank, and but I am a blank. Do you know yeah. where I'm going with yeah. this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Um, my depression and my anxiety are, um, whoops, never mind. Okay, let me restart. Um, my depression and my anxiety are struggles that can be 
isolating and very defeating. Um, but I am resilient. Nice one. Thanks. And last but not least, we will go back, if you want to, how has your identity or how you are perceived by others impacted your mental health? Um, yeah, when it comes to my identity and the relationship it has with my mental health, the other thing I wanted to say is um, my identity has a like, strange relationship with um, the history of like this moment in time and the world that we're living with through. Um, and I think unpacking um, your identity when you're someone who holds a lot of privilege can actually be um, very challenging for one's mental health. Um, and very like a lot, it involves a lot of emotional labor. Um, and I think uh, working through that emotional labor and whatever struggles you have with your mental health is one of the only ways that you can like really start to heal or um, cope with your mental health better. I think ignoring your identity and trying to um, let go of those connections uh, between your identity and the world around you um, while you're trying to safeguard yourself uh, through dark days with mental health can be um, really damaging. I think uh, always, yeah, I don't know. That's all I got. <laughs> it was great. Okay. Really good. That's all. Awesome. That's it. Sweet. Cut. Dude, you